with all of this investment that we're seeing Rwanda putting into the ICT, you know, growing into the ICT hub for East Africa, but also generally for the continent, how is the digital divide, ge digital gender divide, uh, going to be realized? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much for uh, the invitation. Right. And uh, before I talk on the question, uh, you should uh, talk about my institution. Uh, uh, Rwanda National Commission for UNESCO uh, started in 1975 right. under the presidential order. And then uh, the commission, we have uh, a structure as a government institution. And then we have uh, the General Assembly. And then the General Assembly have five sub-commissions. And uh, we have, uh, as a management of the institution, Secretary General. Right. And then we have different departments, including this one of sciences and technology. And then uh, come back on the question, uh, this fall is in the responsibility of my departments there at the commission, uh, the issue related to science, technology, and ICT, and also bring issue of gender uh, education and uh, ICT. So the way we talk on this issue is that we need to look at what we have now on the ground. So the government of Rwanda put much efforts to make sure that the policy is there and then engage different stakeholders from different backgrounds, right. academia, government, private sector, to try to make sure that infrastructures are available. And then the policy that is promoting gender, not only in the ICT, also mm. in the other sectors, is an ingredient just to make sure that ladies, women are uh, have the same opportunities. Yeah, have the same like opportunities as their brothers. Right. Uh, that's what has been done. And then on the side of the commission, we are promoting innovation and knowledge exchange. And then this, this component of gender and education is part of our concern. That's why we used to organize these ICT uh, related challenges and then we bring on board the ladies and women to exchange on that. I think that's where you get uh, informed about the event we have organized uh, last weeks, where we brought together ladies from different uh, background universities and uh, secondary school to exchange on issues, on gaps, and solutions. Right. Uh, just quickly into that, uh, Dominic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have the right ICT infrastructure in Rwanda? And if we do, how affordable is it? Because one of the things that we look at is, yes, it could be there, but can I easily access it? So how affordable is it? Definitely. That's a very good question. Uh, first of all, uh, let's say uh, many thanks to the government of Rwanda because of how far have we gone right. to the establishment of what we have there or what we have right now in terms of ICT. So I can say that we have a huge contribution of the government of Rwanda to make sure that we have all those infrastructures. But still, the government need also uh, to encourage right. yeah, private sector, for example, academia also, to make sure that they contribute more to the establishment of the infrastructure. Because ICT is something that is evolving. We cannot say that we have infrastructure and then we stay there. No, we need to look at what we have now in 2019 mm. and then how or where should we be as a country in the next 10 years. And then I think the government is doing a great job and uh, everyone is called upon just to make sure that uh, this contribution uh, is there in terms of having infrastructure. Right. With the rush to hit the government. The issue of affordability, right. that's what I want to talk on. Uh, I think affordability goes on different levels. If we are at the level of society, uh, look at what we have across the country. We have, uh, we have uh, 4G, we have uh, uh, access to the internet. Uh, but how affordable office. is it? Because yes, the 4G is there, 100% connected yeah. through yeah. Rwanda, but mm -hmm. how affordable is it? Yeah. And That's I want you to give me a, uh, uh, you know, uh, your opinion on that yeah. or something that is Affo how affordable. Is yeah. Affordability, I think, uh, is still an issue because of how many uh, companies that are in the business of providing that. Right. So maybe as we move on with the number of people or with private sector involved in this sector of making sure that everyone has access to the city, it right. will have an impact to the price. Right. I think then on as we move, the, the but the at this moment it is not as at important. this moment. Uh, 
I can say still uh, there is an issue of the <laughs> price. That's a concern. Right. Uh, yeah. Dominic, uh, we've seen the Rwanda National Curriculum Development Center, of course, working on the several curriculums and, of course, the education system changing, having some few things happening a year after the other. But currently, with the rush to you know, hit the targets of uh, becoming a knowledge-based e economy, how much does the current education system prepare the students for the future? Not for today, but for the future, because the future is technology. How is it engaging them? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's a very question, because the government, uh, through Minister of Education, is right. trying to, uh, to enhance or achieve the quality education, the global uh, sustainable development uh, for, on quality education. And then with this target, mm. uh, there is a curriculum, right. competency-based curriculum developed by Rwanda Education Board. This curriculum is now being implemented, and then different partners, including uh, uh, Rwanda National Commission for UNESCO, is contributing to make sure that how this, this program is being implemented at secondary level and uh, at different levels, which challenges are there. And then we keep on tracking how the the, 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 how this, uh, this curriculum is being implemented, and then where can we uh, put much efforts to make sure that we achieve the, 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 the quality education as uh, sustainable development goals uh, emphasized on. And uh, of course, a lot has been done uh, at the level of Ministry of Education, right. and then different partners, including agencies attached to the Ministry of Education, uh, they have been engaged, okay. and then uh, we see a huge progress in terms of implementing the, the curriculum there. Dominic, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.